that sound? That's great. Yeah, it sounds like a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Welcome to the Scratch Track, episode one. This is a podcast we're starting to uh, feature all our local musicians out here in the DMV area. And we're just, you know, trying to learn about the scene and where live music's at and where they're playing and what projects they're working on and stuff. Today we got Matt Trimbley, a uh, guitar player. He's pretty busy out here. Um, he works quite a does does a bunch of stuff with Loudon Jazz Society and uh, Yohenio Bars, pretty ba busy bass player out here too in like Fairfax County and Loudon County. Plays a plays with a bunch of people, dude. And I think he's got like a he's in like a fusion band called Jazz and Fusion with like I think Stan McMullen and Michael Quinn and. Uh, and yeah, Dan Perello, man, a uh, drummer in the area. He actually runs the, uh, he hosts the Jazz Jam Session out at Mittens Academy of Music in Ashburn, Virginia. And uh, really, really glad that these guys are here to share their time with us. And uh, we're just gonna hang. Well, welcome to uh, the Scratch Track Podcast. Scratch track. Yes, because so this place is named after our cat, Callista Fluffheart. <laughs> and then scratch and tr it's just perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, we got Matt Trimbley. Hey. Eugenio Ibars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Perello, man. Hey. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so the big question is Callista violent? Sometimes. Yeah. No, actually not really. Like, you can pet her and stuff, but if she tells you it's enough... Yeah. She'll let you know. She'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's kind of a cat... That's pretty much a cat <laughs> thing, right? Is she tough on furniture? So, yeah. yeah. But she's been pretty chill with all this. She's nice. She actually sleeps on that baffle oh, right nice. behind you oh, sometimes. Yeah. Maybe she'll come and do that in a little bit. Um, but yeah. So, thanks for rolling through. The goal of this is just to, like, promote local music and stuff. I know you're part of the whole Loudon Jazz Society thing. And That's right. We're like-minded, like-minded. Yeah. Uh, Loudon Jazz Society is going into their sixth year now. And same mission, just lots of good things happening. Let's connect people. Wait, We're so Loudon Jazz Society is pretty new, six years. Yeah. yeah. What was happening before that? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, Loudon County is a kind of kind of an exurb right yeah um and it's huge beyond the suburbs of dc and uh you know the places don't get organized until they hit a critical mass of population and like-minded individuals and that's you know that's what we did with loud and jazz society but uh before that was just i mean just a bunch of great musicians moving out there one by one uh doing gigs here and there you know Every now and then someone would comment, hey, well, there's a lot of good musicians out here. Yeah. And, um... Because, like, Al Young's out there. Mm -hmm. in That's Pittsburgh, right. And it's like... Well, you got a lot of resources. You have a lot of resources out this way. Um, you have George Mason uh, in Fairfax. And John Coker teaches there, too, right? John, John Coker, Coker teaches mm -hmm. there. John Coker, uh, who's the president of the Latin Jazz Society and the, the founder, it was his idea... Um, he lives down the road from me, like literally down the road, one mile. Hmm. And, uh, I didn't know him and I just saw, you know, he was, he was working hard, hustling, putting stuff out on social media. I was like, I gotta meet this guy. And he seems, you know, doesn't seem too annoying. And turned out, to, <laughs> turned out to be <laughs> much <laughs> less than that. Yeah. Well, you know, social media is, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're all annoying on social media. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And so I met him and then. He told me about all the great players he knew out there, here, out here. Yeah. We're almost in Loudon. You know, we're in western Fairfax here uh, in Indiana. And uh, they, uh, he told me about a bunch of guys that I didn't know about out there. I told him about a bunch of guys he didn't know about. A bunch of bands, a bunch of gigs, venues. And we just started comparing notes. And, I don't know, it's the beginning of getting organized as a, as a jazz community. That's um, nice. And yeah, it's it's been really great. Because there's nothing much between D.C. and like Loudoun County in terms of jazz. Well, Fairfax nice. County would be very upset to hear that. But 
I mean, you know, it's 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 now starting to come up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. even really know where the spots are, but yeah. Well, so I mean, you, you guys, you guys know about a bunch of spots. So one of the big spots was Epicure, right? Um, you know, such as it was, you know, funky little place, funky little place uh, in in Fairfax City. It was like the Ethiopian spot or something, right? No, no, uh, kind of Mediterranean-ish, ish, but yeah. but also bar food. Like I yeah. feel like they had burgers and stuff, right? But they had cool, they were a cool, uh, it was just a very open-minded ownership that would let you do whatever. So they had well, jazz. It, 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 the, the economics worked out really well for that kind of thinking. They pay, just paid nobody. Right. They just didn't pay anybody, <laughs> anything. <laughs> work, shit. Worked out. <laughs> yeah. and, and so you really <laughs> can be normal. quite open-minded. When, yes, you know, yeah, exactly. That's uh, the... Uh, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure I ever, like, loved that, that <laughs> shared risk model where the musicians basically assume all of the business risk for the, uh, for the night and the, the venue just existed. Hang that tip jar out there. Uh, so but even with that business model, they did not survive. And <laughs> they, they closed, right? They did. Uh, yeah. But they were around for a good long time. They yeah. were the first jam session that I ever heard about oh, okay. in Virginia. In Virginia. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't, so, you know, I've been in Loudoun County since I moved here from New Jersey 25 years ago, um, and I never really got to know Arlington or Alexandria scene, you know, I knew a bit about, a bit about D.C. Yeah, 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 But like you said, I mean, I got my home and then I got D.C. And they're, you know, what's, a, what, what is all that in between? Yeah. There's a lot. Uh, but Epicure was one of them, it, it, and then that, that went away, uh, a lot of happenings at Mason, for sure. Is this still happening stuff in the school, or? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know something I don't know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. There's I don't know a what lot the, of good faculty. I, I went to school there in the 90s, and it was, they, the, I think the jazz program was in its infancy. But I could be wrong about that, but I certainly wasn't aware of it. And so it definitely grew up quickly. I don't know if that was post, because they had a Final Four run, and like, 2004, That's 2006, right. something yeah, like that. That was a big deal. And then all of a sudden, things started changing there. I, I don't want to associate the two for certain, but in my mind, it's kind of like, as the school started growing post-Final Four run, the, the, the program became more known to me anyway. Let's see. Yeah. But, so. but not a lot of places even around there to play music. Dude, like, where, where did the students go and hang out and the, play? And... This is the thing that they would, <laughs> some of them would come to Epicure. Which, it was, what, two miles away from Yeah, Epicure I mean, you, you have to have a car. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's not, I mean, you uh, can take the Q bus. That's one yeah. of the bummers about, yeah, yeah, go, you yeah. know, going to school out in the country here. Yeah. Because <laughs> you need yeah. a car. Yeah. But yeah, when we were, when we were, when I was in school, there was a place called uh, Fat Tuesdays, and I think it might even still, still be there. there. And they kept, they had a jam session that was more, and this was much later. When I was there, I don't remember anything. Certainly no jazz. I played there in rock bands and stuff. And there was a place in Fairfax City called T.T. Reynolds, also rock. And then the place where um, Earp's Ordinary is now was a, was a club. And they had bands there. It was a sizable place. Yeah. Uh, I, I went down there before they opened up the new spot to check out the it's the, like the little, the little ones. Oh, you went. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before they opened it up, was it Marco? Was is it Mark? I can't remember the dude's name. Oh, um, you know, uh, Mike. 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 Mike right. I'm Michael. Not, yeah, Michael. Michael. Yeah. Michael. Michael. Yeah. 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 Paramo. De... Michael De Marco. Yeah. <laughs> Michael De Marco, I think. But yeah, we checked it out uh, when I was doing a songwriter thing there. I was like, oh, this is cool. So that's that's cool that you guys are starting to do stuff there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, they're, and, and they've been making noises about having music forever. And <laughs> That's right. They're, uh, it, well, I mean, it's, it's not easy. It's not yeah. easy because you have to find the balance of, you have to find the balance of, like, paying the musician something respectable mm -hmm. and actually, you know, keeping your business alive. Yeah. Uh, I understand. I understand both ends of that. I really do. Um, there are some unique situations that we know about, like out in, uh, also in Fairfax, uh, Bourbon Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bourbon Boulevard. You're there like twice a week or something. <laughs> once, once. Yeah. It used to be twice. So Bourbon Boulevard, be uh, on, uh, 28th there, um, is, 
uh, they have music. He's had music seven nights a week for at least a year. Mm -hmm. and oh, but no, two and a half. No, years. yeah, it's a long. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's also a pretty new spot. In yeah, Virginia. and it's yeah. You but know, it's hanging it's just, on. Seems to be doing okay. There, there are guys that are like, oh, he should pay more money than he does. He has music seven yeah. nights yeah. a week forever. He has not lost faith that's in good. this feature of his business. Yeah, and sure, it would be great if he paid more money. But I mean, there is no question that that he is, you know, he is committed. Um, Every and once that's, in a while, and that's, a real, that's a really rare thing. Every once in a while, the patrons there tip really good. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> it's a nice. I think it's a nice sounding room too. I actually yeah. like the yeah. way the drums sound in that room a lot. So. And yeah. he's got a big variety of of acts through. I mean, yeah. Um, and it's not. It's for musicians. It's pretty cool because it, it is not one of these places where you're like always too loud. You're too mm -hmm. loud, you're too loud, you're too loud. I mean, I've never been told to turn down once. Occasionally on the weekends, but yeah. very rarely, yes. Yeah, well, so, uh, I mean, most of the times I play there, I'm playing there with you, uh, Eugenio, with, uh, with uh, you know, just duo, or yeah, yeah. Uh, on a, you know, on a Tuesday night or, or Monday night or something like that. But when we add drums, I mean, it gets, it gets kind of, Kind of humming. Yeah. Uh, it's and, not. It's not the, a bad spot at all. No, and the right. and the yeah. you know in the crowd they just get louder. You know everything right. just sort of gets louder and it's okay. I mean we're not we're not doing anything crazy, but still uh, anybody that's played anybody that's played a bar or restaurant or, or a place that's not primarily a bar you've been yeah. told to turn down a million times mm -hmm. and and it's and it's tough because you know jazz is dynamic music like you know where like you get going. You're reacting to one another. Did one of the things that happens when you're reacting to one another is just, you know, you're escalating. Yeah. Did they ever tell you to turn up? <laughs> that one I haven't heard. No. <laughs> that no, one I haven't heard. <laughs> no, but if, I, I mean, if, we, if we're... If we're like, not just there. If we're in, <laughs> inventorying places that regularly have live jazz, we got to We have to yeah. mention Bourbon Boulevard. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the few spots like, out here. South right. south of the airport. Um, what, are the, what are the other regular places? Um, well, Griffin's gig, the uh, Dante. Oh my goodness, that man. They've that been going for like 11 boy, years or something. That's oh. like in the middle of nowhere too, right? Well, like, no, no. Well, it's maybe the, it feels that way to it's you. It's in the middle of the of <laughs> the richest area of one of the richest counties of in the uh, one of the richest areas of the country. No, that, so <laughs> but it a, is a fantastic That gig. is Dante's Ristorante. Yeah. Uh, in uh, in Great Falls, it's not even five minutes off Route Wait, 7. Wait, isn't Griffin staying like somewhere in like where he lives in Warrington? Or no, something? no, oh, no, that's no, where no. he lives. Yeah, he lives out there, but no, yeah. no, this this gig is a, yeah, it's a great spot. For some for some reason, I thought his like his summer like casual is like a something in Warrington. I, some... he he once wanted to have a barn jam because oh. he he owns a barn. Yeah. He, yeah. He, I think he inherited a family property, like a. You know, big place, and Sick. he's got a barn, and it's probably super cool, but it's far away. <laughs> and yeah. he was having trouble. He was having trouble putting that together. I don't know actually if he ever did. Um, I don't know if he ever did, but hey, maybe we could. Uh, maybe like, we could revive the yeah. idea. Maybe he'll listen to this, Griffin. Griffin, yeah. Griffin, we'll do the barn jam. We will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. barn sounds great. Just, yeah, just let us. Yeah, actually, talk about a place we were we were talking before the uh, for people listening. Uh, we were talking before we started recording. About uh, you know how musicians, all musicians, really could use some decent demo, demo reel, <laughs> and wow, what a better place to get demo reel than in a barn, dude. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, God, yeah. aesthetically, it would just be it just some be, lights, and then it'll look good. Yeah, okay. and it sounds good because it's not good. a like, it's complete wood. square. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, yeah. you know what you could do. You know what you could do, uh, and. It's, it's a whole new. <laughs> We're plotting. It's a whole. Well, no, it's a whole new world of like you know guerrilla marketing and and uh, uh, you know uh, social media and media and recording and uh, you know all this stuff is uh, you could have you could have like a session uh, at, in his barn. Just awesome. invite musicians and say we're gonna we're gonna hire we're gonna pitch in we're gonna hire a videographer and he's gonna just like you know we're gonna Shoot, we'll record yeah. it we'll make yeah. high quality recording and we'll. A videographer like going and trying to catch some moments. That's sick, yeah. And then what like what like we said, what do you need for Instagram? <laughs> what do you need to, for Instagram to market your gig? You need twenty seconds yeah. of music. Yeah. Oh. Right? You could do it you could do it with ten. 
10 compelling <laughs> seconds, 10 compelling seconds of a beautiful phrase in a beautiful setting where yeah. you're just like looking good, looking confident. <laughs> that, that, it's a new world. Yeah, Two it. minutes is a long yeah. time, you yeah. hang out. It's yeah, a long time. That's true. It's like the TikTok idea, right? Like how many characters, or no, it was it, um, Twitter's uh, the Twitter the, had the, the character the number of yeah. characters. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So and then that uh, it was uh, Vines was six seconds. Yeah, okay. that was the yeah. that TikTok that was the TikTok predecessor. Yeah, that's that's right. where I don't know. I kind of find <laughs> that's the part of I, I any artist will tell you like the the restrictions bring out the creative creativity. That's true. Like that's, you know, like somebody constrains you. That is very true. Somebody that's constrains true. you. That's when you like start innovating. To get your get your message out in a short amount of time, it is in your interest as a musician to market your own gigs. Yes, uh, absolutely. It is not a good idea for venues to count entirely on the musicians to do it. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I always think I always think it should be a fifty a fifty fifty excuse me a fifty fifty draw uh, share like with coming up with the draw. Yeah. You know, like when 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 uh, when I play Blues Alley with guys, Blues Alley is going to bring pe some people. Just because it's Blue Sally. Yeah. It's got its own draw. Mm -hmm. But I need to Yeah. I need yeah. to do the other half. Exactly. Of it. It's a symbio symbiosis, right? Like mm -hmm. his Absolutely. It's, it's still a business at the end of the day. And, like And you know, who knows, you know, who knows how close to fifty fifty, you know, that responsibility ever ends up being, or effectively who brought the most people. Yeah. But both need to do it. You were recently there with Melissa Aldana, right? Yeah, I was. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's sick. That was totally <laughs> sick. I have played <laughs> I did the math, so when we were going there, so you're talking about the the another institution, the Jazz Works Big Band, the Jazz Works Big Band out in Gainesville, Virginia, at the at the Craftworks Tap Room. Yeah. Talk about faith. That place that has been going for uh, over a year, and they play every Monday night, and um, it's definitely hit a it's definitely hit a uh, you know sort of a happy stasis where like, you know, you, you get the same guys coming out to play. So it's always a good quality band. And then we have good quality subs yeah. and we rotate in because, hey, it's is a, that a it's reading a, band or? It is a reading band. It's a reading big band in the, in the tradition of uh, the Village Vanguard Monday night band. Sick. Which yeah, as cool. a, as a high schooler, I used to take the train from Jersey <laughs> into Manhattan. I used to tell my mom I was going to the movies. Sorry, mom. <laughs> uh, so my mom I was going to the movies and then like we'd go to the the, the, the New Jersey transit station which was just as, as close by as the movie theater and uh, we'd hop on the train we'd get out of Penn Station walk you know we didn't take cabs so we walked the 25 blocks south Ooh. down to the Village Vanguard <laughs> and uh, you know we would try to act older than we were <laughs> it was the 80s so you know yeah. se 17 year olds could get a drink uh because you had a two drink minimum, <laughs> right? Oh, so we're man. like, "Well, you're gonna make me buy a drink. <laughs> you might as well serve me a real drink." Right. Um, but yeah, we Coca used to, Cola doesn't cut it. Well, <laughs> well, my high school friends and I we used to go catch the Vanguard band That's awesome. uh, back in the you know eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven. That's cool. And uh, and the, yeah, that was, that was that was a classic. And you guys are there every week. Jazz, you're switching now to Jazzworks. Jazzworks. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, I was just like, <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Add, um, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, there you go. I'm with you. I'm hanging. Um, it, uh, yeah, every single week, every Monday night. Every and Monday we night. Decent, decent, we get a decent crowd. And then we have special shows. We had a, a show with uh, the director, the, the director of the jazz program at um, Duquesne University. Mm. Duquesne University. It was uh, Mike Tamaro. Mike Tamaro is a, um, anybody that knows big band music has played tons of Mike Tamaro charts. He is a very successful uh, publisher. He was in one of the service bands. I can't remember which one. I'm going to say the Army Blues. Um, and uh, so Mike Tamaro was in the Army, Army Blues in this area, so he's got tons of connections. He came out, just like Melissa Aldana uh, came and did a, a, a couple of sets with us, the Jazzworks band. Um, Mike Tamaro came out, uh, sent us a whole bunch of his music to learn, to promote uh, a new CD that he's done. And um, that was just awesome. It was just awesome. Um, that's cool, and yeah, that that was that was really cool. That and that is that's a grassroots thing. That's just a couple of guys. Um, mostly, the core of the band, the core of the of of the um, origin of the band are are Fairfax County music teachers, hmm. like the hippest music teachers. Which 
Fairfax, Fairfax County is a pretty hip place. Mm -hmm. It I is, mean, man. Come on, it is. Mm -hmm. Culturally, it is. Mm -hmm. And the schools are awesome. among the best in the country. Um, yeah. And so naturally, their music programs are going to be, and any good music program is going to have a bunch of you know good jazz programs in there, too. And uh, you got things like the... Um, the Chantilly Jazz Festival, uh, Chantilly High School Jazz Festival, mm -hmm. which is actually a big deal. It's That's a big deal cool. because Chantilly High School has cranked out an amazing number of great musicians. They yeah. all come back. They go to they go on to North Texas State. They go on to Berkeley, um, and but even uh, locally, like Mason's a pretty good school. Like because yes. Angels, mm -hmm. Mathay is from like she went there, and did Connor Holdridge go out there too, or oh, I don't remember. Well, so you've got, so you've got, you know, we kind of covered it up, like who are the pan guys? Uh, those are those are those are all guys at Mason. Yeah, they have a pan thing, right. a steel pan thing. Happens. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like oh, the what's his, what's steel his pan guy. What's his name? He's amazing. Uh, the the teacher? I the don't teacher. remember. I don't remember. Yeah, oh, sorry, steel pan guys in the yeah. country is like here. Which yeah, is this is crazy. the spot. Yeah. Uh, I I would have to look him up, but he he is amazing. Yeah. Like and not. Not, oh, he's really good for a pan, you know, steel pan yeah. player. No, no, no. <laughs> he, is, he is a stunning musician. Yeah, every once in a while, students will go to a session in D.C. and they're playing, like, bebop lines on, on the steel pan. drums. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. this is... Yeah, so he's kind of, cre <laughs> he's yeah. kind of created this draw. It's, a, it's you know, interesting. Probably an international, international draw, I would right? guess, yeah. Yeah. I would uh, guess. That's pretty cool. And, uh... If you want pan, man, that's the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's there's stuff happening. And you guys are like, which is, I'm really, dude, grateful you guys are out here because you are the local, like, Northern Virginia bringing music to this area kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. you do the whole Mittens thing, which built such a big community out there. And mm -hmm. Yeah. That's actually, like, one of my favorite jams just oh, because, thanks. like, it's yeah. so welcoming to people who don't do this. I mean, it's a big contrast to the DC sessions, yes. right? Yep. It's the DC nice. sessions are still have a little bit, you know, I, and I talk about this with, with, with uh, guys um, my age. It's like, we remember back in the 80s, it's just like, if you were, if you were uh, going to a jam session, <laughs> if you were going to, the beer is flowing here, uh, if you were going to a jam session, you could expect to seriously have your feelings hurt. Seriously, yeah, seriously, right. have your feelings yeah, hurt. That was definitely that, and that persisted into the two thousands as well, or into the into and, the well, early two thousands. You can still find it in DC. Like you'll yeah. still it's find good. some some. You'll yeah. still find some old dude, my age, basically. You know, like kind of vibing you and giving you a hard time, and and I, it's just like I, I have a different. I was thinking about this earlier because this is a good thing to talk about. I think. Yeah. I actually think it's kind of a good thing. To get vibed a little bit, but now having said that, the mittens one, I, you know, it is not, and it never Dude, will I be. Dude, I love it because of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it never will be, and you can get up there and completely fall flat, and it's okay because everybody's and be really. A bunch of guys, and there'll be a bunch of guys like like whispering in your ear, telling yeah, you what yeah. thing to play next, trying yeah. to get you through it. Yep. Yeah. So that you and have it is it is probably better that way, but I still I can because I have this room for both. There's yeah. room for the spectrum, right? And I, I, it, it is good to have an expectation that's set, and then when you're not meeting it, to be told, "Hey, look, you're not meeting it." Yeah. Now, can it be done politely? Sure, <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. Well, yeah. And it doesn't always go that way, yeah. but uh, but yeah, no, I, I I definitely have had the DC vibe thrown in my day and probably will again <laughs> but yeah I, I appreciate you saying that about mittens dude it's cool man because yeah. everyone's there like it, it's nice that people are just welcomed well yeah. so so what is i mean people listening don't know what mittens is what so is, yeah yes. okay so <laughs> mittens is a um it's called mittens academy of music in um in ashburn virginia we have a very east coast pronunciation of mittens don't we why How should it be? Mintons. Mintons. Oh, yes. Mintons. 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 They are, yeah, yeah. I notice we're all clipping that. We're all yeah, clipping yeah. that uh, consonant there. Mintons. Min mintons, right? mintons. Mintons. I guess. Yeah, mintons. mintons. <laughs> they have been there for, I think, 23 years as a school. And I've been teaching with them for 15 years. And I don't remember precisely when we started the jam session, but it's in the six to eight year yes, range. It is. And uh, so it's been going every once a month. Now it's the second Sunday every month. And uh, it's 
the whole idea was to try to just bring people together and do the you know do the same thing that we're talking about where we have a nice group of like a nice house band to support whoever wants to come in and play and sometimes that's yeah you know good you know high quality players and sometimes it's people who are just literally this is their first time playing jazz i've had people like come to me and say like, they've completely given up on jam sessions how they get vibed the shit out of it and yeah. then like oh yeah mittens is hella cool oh well that's like true. mike meller is, yeah, a, is yeah. one of those cats man like mm -hmm. he, he started going i think last month or something a couple yeah a couple months ago yeah thanks for telling me yeah, about that. he's a great guy he actually he actually expressed a feeling of vibe last time and i was shocked and i this was in a, a text message after and I said, "Really? Who said something to you?" I was like, "Who? Who? Who did this? Not at ours. Not at Mittens. No way." <laughs> and he said, "No, it was probably just more from going to the DC ones." <laughs> so it kind of confirms what we were saying, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Mike's. Well, we had a good time with Mike. I, yeah, I, I played with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the. He did Butterfly. Or yeah, something. Mike yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my Butterfly. god! <laughs> I'd never heard that tune. That was amazing. Yeah. That's a great song. Very yeah. cool. But I, I get it too. If you're trying to host a, a jam session at like an establishment, then there's a certain quality that has to be met. I, I think it's more of the, this is, I, I don't know if I care for this term, I don't know if I belong to it, but the oral tradition of, of the music is probably more where the vibe comes from, I think. I, at least, I hope, that it's kind of like, well, this was what happened to the old guys when they would go. Oh, yeah. When, if you were coming up in the 40s and 50s and 60s and you weren't ready for prime time, you would get called on it by, you know, the people who were there who were ready, and that's sort of par for the part of the experience and that's the only positive that i would put on it is there should be some sense that you got to pull your weight and yeah. not not from an audience perspective but just functioning in the ensemble i think so i mean so there, there there's a good there's a good point so when you go to mr henry's mm -hmm. in on capitol hill um when you go to mr henry's there are paying customers there right they don't know people in the band they're not your mom and dad they're mm -hmm. not you know they're right. not your, your friends they're just people that yep. came to hear some music they're like yeah. oh jam session you know, oh, in D.C., these guys got to be good. You expect it to be good. And so good. there's an expectation that yeah. it's, that it's yeah. you know, that it's good. So Minton's is like, it is a, oh, so at Minton's, there's, it's a music school. Right. Yeah. Those are not paying customers. They're right. not there for a night out. Right. It's in the middle of Sunday afternoon. Right. And it's a school. Yeah. It's there for learning. Yeah. And it's, it's a nice contrast. Yeah. It's yeah. a really nice yeah. session. Well, we cool. have, um. So other jam sessions we have the the, the Latin, Dell the Latin Jazz Society yeah the Dell formerly known as Chefscape in the villages at Leesburg <laughs> um, always reminds me of the the villages in Florida mm -hmm. <laughs> infamous retirement sprawl <laughs> yeah that was the, the first living one, debauchery yeah. that was the first session I went to moving yeah. here. So, so that one, that's been going for as long as the Jazz Society has existed. So, and so we, we decided, um, you know, when we were forming the Jazz Society, like the three of us, or four of us, that, um, you know, we needed some kind of anchor event, and like monthly jam session, yeah. we'll do it. We started off at Trungo's in downtown Leesburg. And, and you um, do a duo thing there weekly, right? Like at Trungo's? Is that what No, that we, we, uh, at Trungo's, they have a big event room in the basement really nice and uh trungo's you know we've mentioned a lot of venues uh today in this session trungo's has much better food <laughs> <laughs> than almost all of them um that really makes them stand out like you know i'd be proud to tell anybody you know go to trungo's and try the food uh yeah. it's really good it's barbecue oriented you know americana you know meat protein, yeah, yeah, yeah. protein oriented and um he has a really nice event room, and he's been very generous uh, hosting events. He even um, uh, and so what he does is he does a Tuesday night special music or not Tuesday yeah Tuesday night uh, special music session. The first Tuesday he has my band that I played with for twenty three years now, Swing Shift. It's a yeah, eight, eighteen piece right. big band. They play every first month, first Tuesday of the month. He opens the place just for that. He's not normally open on Tuesdays. Huh. And then, then the second and fourth Tuesdays, he started having Irish, uh, Irish traditional music jams hmm. um, upstairs in the place. And they come and do like a legit, like a fiddles legit, and penny yeah, whistles. Yeah, legit and penny whistles and, and, and yeah. you know, guitars, mandolins and stuff like that. And they all like sit around a table just like they do in Dublin. 
and uh, in cool. Dublin and Dingle and Derry <laughs> and Galway and all those places. Uh, guys playing open hole flutes and and stuff. Playing, you know, it's like a jazz jam session. Yeah, but. It's, you know, these hundreds and hundreds of Irish dance tunes that they all just sort of know. Oh, no. Yeah. And, uh, and, they, and they're, they're doing it legit. There's, there's guys out there. Uh, and so they're the second and fourth Tuesday. Uh, that's, that's upstairs at Trungo's. And then on the third Tuesday of every month, the Loudon Jazz Ensemble. That's a band that's loosely connected with, I think loosely connected with the Loudon Symphony. I think they get some public funding. Um, there's a Loudon Symphony? There's a lot of symphony. A, there's a really good loud <laughs> symphony. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Yeah. Learn and learn. Well, hey, yeah. That's why we get together and talk. Yeah. That's yeah. why we just got to share, share, the, share the, you know, share yeah, the yeah. knowledge. Share the knowledge with the uh, the FNG here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We, wanna, we don't have to explain what FNG means. I actually don't know what that means. Uh, F, F, FN new guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of true. <laughs> yeah, but that, uh, yeah. but but the Loudon Symphony's been going strong for decades, um, as long as I've lived here. And the Loudon Jazz Ensemble was here when I got when I moved here in in two thousand, and I played a number of times with them uh, oh, in various capacities, playing guitar and bass. Um, and they play there every third Tuesday at Trungos, and that's a that's a they, that's that's been going strong, but that's where the Loudon Jazz the Loudon Jazz Society, which is different than the Loudon Jazz Ensemble, Loudon Jazz Society, um, started having the jams at Trungos, and then hmm. we got all shut down for the pandemic, which, you know, is a fascinating little hmm. speed, interruption speed bump to the local <laughs> culture here. Um, yeah, but we kind of came out of it pretty strong, I'd say. The shit really really closed down out here too, like oh, yeah. in San Francisco, oh. it was just completely oh yeah 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 so like like in the middle of the country like <laughs> they kind of they kind of for practical reasons they kind yeah. of got away with ignoring it a little bit yeah. <laughs> out here you couldn't you know it's just like out here it's just like tons of people working in in really you know dense office buildings kids going to school and everything like yeah. that that stuff spread like wildfire here so we had to you know we had to like treat it like it was real um, cause this is a dense area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not New Jersey where, you know, my, my homeland, uh, <laughs> but, but it's pretty dense. It's pretty dense. Go, you know, go look at the map. <laughs> yeah, I just remember driving across the country and the moment I hit, like, I think some parts of Nevada, I was like, Oh, it's, it's different now. Everyone's <laughs> like, this is as usual. Yeah. Like, no mass study. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, it, well, you know, we smaller social circles, right? Yeah. Small social, a lot more open space. Yeah. Fewer people, less density. You can, you can kind of pretend that it wasn't a, such a big deal. <laughs> and, uh, here we couldn't get away with that. Yeah. There remember some outdoor jams at your house. Uh, we, oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's a, whole, that's a whole other conversation. How did we survive? How did jazz survive uh, the <laughs> pandemic? That's a whole other, you could have a whole, let's have another session about that. Outdoor jams. That's, that's yeah. on my deck. On yeah. my deck. I had a big deck out there in uh, Loudoun County. That's right. Because, yeah. yeah, I remember going out to your place and mm -hmm. seeing the... And oh my so God. we just, you know, nobody would even come in the house. We would just, they just report right to the deck. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd pr provide a drum kit. I'd provide a bass <laughs> yeah. Um I would do live streaming. My neighbors loved it. They still... Yeah! They loved it. My And they, they still talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I went to an HOA meeting once. Um, and... Like a good third of the HOA meeting was them all talking about how how can we get jazz back at Matt's house? That's cool. Because I'm on a corner lot, like up up high. Yeah, and yeah. So so people people came and brought lawn chairs to my yard. They brought lawn chairs to the street. They would pull up in their car and do like a drive-in concert. And like they just like have all the kids in the minivan and roll down all the windows and open the sunroof yeah. and just like listen to us play. And I had great players because nobody had a gig, so I just had I had my my yes. choice of everybody. And we just we're just like you know keep it alive. We had like a little Venmo donation thing. Yep. You know, I was yep. like giving giving some of the young cats some some gas money to get get out yeah. there. Yeah. We there, just we kept it going. There's some DC gigs that started with that, right? Like the Bossa gig with Elijah Balbed. Oh yeah. Was one of those, and then when everything was like sort of okay, and it was like fuck it, then they moved into the venue. Yeah. But they they started outside, outside of the venue. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Henry did that too, right? 
Mr. Henry's did? Yeah, I remember oh. playing uh, some live stream at somebody's, somebody's yard uh, oh, that yeah. was being streamed at Mr. Henry's. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think I remember doing like some jam session in somebody's yard and it was sponsored by Mr. Henry's. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Like, that was Shannon. I think one time. Yeah. You must have. You Shannon Gunn. Yeah. yeah. I did, yeah. I did that with Shannon and Christian one day. Yeah. And yeah, like even small started live streamings and stuff for a minute, which they still are. Yeah. So yeah, I guess did. that's one thing yeah. that came out good from the. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, I, 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 you know. I, I lost so many gigs that year. That was like, that was probably going to be the best year of my career right there. Yeah. <laughs> Rats. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. So I focus personally, my own personal experience, I focus so hard on keeping things alive during the pandemic that I came out the other end of the pandemic with more gigs than I ever had previous. Oh, that's cool. Um, just because. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I, everybody, I don't know. I just, I, maybe I sent the signal that I'm serious, you know. That's cool. And like, the people are like, oh, well, you're serious, so. Yeah, you guys are like the busiest cats in like this area for sure, man. And oh, I don't have you guys like you guys play together These pretty guys. often too, right? These guys are. You are too, man. Because I see you do all the rock band shit and like all the jazz yeah, shit. Yeah, I mean, I like, have a couple rock things coming up. Yeah, I don't know. These guys play a lot more than you know. Maybe, Generally, maybe I'm fairly you're, you're, you're teaching all the time. Yeah. 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 And you guys mentioned Bourbon Boulevard. You guys play together as a trio there quite a bit, right? We've yeah, done it. A few yeah, times we played at Epicure a lot. Yeah, we had a true a, a good core group at Epicure yeah. for was it about a year, I think, right? Yeah. Or maybe I think a full year. Yeah. 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 Right so, before they shut down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's nice you guys already have that relationship, man. And yeah. Yeah, guys, we we've got a couple of cool things going on with the uh the Latin Jazz Society. Um they uh they got a grant, like a Virginia Commission on the Arts, I think I want to say, to, to uh, they sponsored a show at uh, a show and a, and a master class at Minton's. Yeah, which uh, was really well attended. Yeah, and highly uh, well reviewed. Yeah. So they just had that really just a couple of weeks ago. Quentin Walston trio. Yeah, because Cooney out. was there. Yeah, Cooney. Yeah, yep. Jeff Cooney yep. and Dan Kelly. Yeah, yeah I've Kelly. never met Dan Kelly. Oh, He's a great player. <laughs> and a great guy. Great guy. Yeah. Um, I've been doing gigs at the uh, Ion Training Center. Man, talk about a unique, Ion unique. Training Center. Yeah, do, do you know about this? No. Oh, good. I got one that nobody knows. <laughs> I got one that nobody knows. You were supposed to play there with uh, Scott Clark. That's where you were supposed oh, to play. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So the Ion Training Center is a massive facility, kind of at the foot of the runway of the Leesburg Airport. Okay. The Leesburg okay. Executive Airport. Uh huh. Um, just in an industrial park there, massive building that has two full-size skating rinks that is, uh, an Olympic training facility for skaters. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure they've got Olympic qualifiers, like, training there wow. all the time. Okay. They have hockey of all levels, uh, going there all the time, and they have mm. a little pub attached to it. Oh, nice. And, um, very, uh, very creative, open-minded people running the place. And they, they're like, oh, we want to have music. We want to have music. We want to get people in this pub when, no, you know, when nobody else is here. And so that's what uh, Scott Clark, Scott Clark, uh, yeah. vocalist, um, based in Leesburg, has uh, landed a gig with them. He uh, worked it out, and we, did, we had a little quintet. We had a nice quintet there the other night. And they, it was a big success. Is that a regular thing? or? It's, they're trying to make it regular. Yeah. Um, that's cool. But that's, yeah. Oddest place, oddest place I've, one of the oddest places I've ever had a gig. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they did it up really nice. Like they, you know, changed the lighting. Um, big, they have like massive picture windows looking out on the skating rink. They like covered it with black cloth. Yeah. yeah. You know, to make it intimate and uh, nice. It was That's like cool. It was great. great. Good food. See all this shit happening in Leesburg, yo. Yeah. <laughs> there are so, so many. That's what I'm <laughs> There was a, That's a really good point. Uh, this, this year in January, there was an attempt at the uh, Lansdowne Resort. Do you remember yeah. that? that place yeah. too? I think I did a thing with Caleb yeah. May there mm -hmm. at one point. Yeah. With Ariana Hartman? Ariana, yeah. 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 But that, she, that got shut down in March, early March. Oh, shit. And that's more typical. That's right. music. So there's some more typical experiences. Like, yeah. 
place is like, oh, we want to have music, and you know, they try it out for a little bit, and then they give up. Um, well, one thing I was going to say earlier when we were talking about the symbiosis or whatever with the venue and the performer. And the artist, yeah. Is that we, we have to remember, and I think at least the, all of us do, I'm sure you feel this way, but sometimes people don't, but we need those businesses to succeed yeah. in order to have the gig. Absolutely. So it is truly a, a situation where you want them to do the best that they can do. And sometimes that people forget that along the way, I feel like. And, you know, the idea is I'm, I'm thrilled to have Bourbon Boulevard there because it's like seven minutes from my house. Mm -hmm. And I'll drop in and just mm -hmm. watch musicians and yeah. you know, try to support it. Um, I think we all are. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's that kind of thing where it's like, no, you, it's... you want these businesses to do well. So, you know, nobody's coming, just for the venue owners, nobody's coming in with this attitude of like, oh man, you know, I you remember pay me more. And this and that and the other. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, 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 no. We're just... You know, it's, I mean, I don't want to be abused. That's not what I'm saying either. But just mutual yeah. respect. Yeah, yeah the, the uh, um, when yeah you know, we were talking about Epicure, mm -hmm. you know, reminiscing about Epicure, which shut down two years, two years ago. Yeah, right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it shut down a month before I got the town. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. It's like motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. They, they did run a couple of gigs upstairs at the terrace. Yeah. At, oh, at the, yeah. The, at the, you know, one of those moments of the pandemic where it seemed like it was opening up a bit, and, yeah. but then it didn't. And that was run by a, a, a cool guy named Gus. And sorry, Gus, if you're listening, the food was not good. No. <laughs> the food was not good. And so, you know, you're talking about symbiosis. And it's just like, well, I want to get my people out to this gig. Yeah. But, I, need but I don't want to be yeah. this food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are definitely some places like and it's, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... You know, it's just like we're not. You know, yeah. we are. Uh, you know, we're we're we're. You know, musicians are scrapping scrapping our way along, but we we have day jobs. We're not starving musicians, right? And we kind of know what quality. You know, yeah. what a quality restaurant experience should be. <laughs> and it's just a little embarrassing. Like this is like, oh sell. yeah, I'm playing at this. It's you know, high school cafeteria kind of <laughs> death place and. Uh, yeah, you should come and... Can I try this one? Yeah, man, go for it. Thank you, Blake Ross, for brewing all this beer. Thank you, Blake. <laughs> Sorry, I keep... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm Paul. Yeah, Thank you, Seth Docourt, for building these incredible drums. Uh, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Nice. But so, you didn't know you didn't know because Be Bettis was out there. Bettis was in. Bettis was out in SoCal. Oh, was so, he? Okay. Yeah. So okay. He's like reason, I thought it was north, northern. He was like six hours away or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Bettis is a homie, man. Like, yeah. He's got a list of people that he will still make stuff for. Oh, that's cool. And I'm on that list. Please. Nice. <laughs> I always thought because he loved the Peisty sound creation dark ride. Huh. And I always thought that he should make a heavy one, and I actually suggested to him, you should do like heavier shit, because I would like a, a heavy dark ride. Yeah. That is very appealing to me, but I I don't want the, the dark ride, the Peisty one, only because it's so associated with Al Foster and Paul Motion that I feel like a hack. You know what I mean? Because you got to hang about, because you were part of the Symbolic like, yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. but I always thought he should do that, and I suggested it to him, and he was like, nah, man, he's like, nobody will buy those. Nobody wants that weird shit. I like weird symbols, man. I yeah, like the ones that are weird. Yeah. Even when I'm supposed to, I went to the store to buy a crash. Like, I should have bought the most practical thing. And I, I picked up this 18-inch 70s Zildjian ride. And it kind of went, caw. And I was like, mm, I want that. <laughs> it's so impractical. But whatever. Everyone out here plays modern Zildjians. And oh. I'm like, I'm not a fan of it. No. <laughs> Yeah, not not generally. Oh, not the, the, anyone looking at the mittens uh, jam session if you're a drummer and want to play nice old case, go to <laughs> you're gonna get good shit at my at my session. And as you said, you're like, why do you bring this stuff out to the jam? And I'm like, well, I mean that's what it's for, right? It's like ten grand of symbols. No, in the sand no, 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 not like that. Yeah, no. yeah. The one is is pretty pricey, but <laughs> but it's. I mean, you know, when else oh. am I going to play it? I want to play it. Yes. You know, it's funny. There's there, there's definitely, distinctly, <laughs> two groups of musicians. <laughs> and At least he deigned to call yeah. us musicians, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not, that's not you at all. Right? We, had, we yeah. had a nice... Uh,
a nice uh, gathering of uh, drummers uh, for Al Young. Oh, yeah. Um, at the last Latin Jam. Al Young is such a bad, bad dude. He's oh, my God. Wonderful player. He's my favorite dude out here. He, he, wonderful he, player. He's, he's, I he's think, on Lee's bird. I think he's chilling. my favorite drummer. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, in Virginia that Shut I know. Up. Um, he's, and he's just got, he's got a lovely kit and he gets beautiful sounds out of it. He just plays great. You know that kit he's playing on is like straight it, up like it's, student it's model. It's nothing. Yeah. It's those, a Catalina. Those, those are not lovely drums. <laughs> That's nuts. Those are like, yeah, those are shit drums. Yeah. He gets a great sound. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Al? I think they sound amazing. Yeah. You were that, talking about that's tone. That's because that's Al. That's it. You, you said tone, and I was just like, well, then. Beautiful tone. See, we didn't that's finish. Al with his shit drums. Yes. We didn't finish. Al, we love you, bro. We didn't finish. The idea is that the tone's really here, right? Yeah. And not yeah. not yeah. there. It's just, but when you, you know, when you care, you care. And if you don't, you don't. Yeah. It's still here. Dude, Whether you care or you don't care, it's still here. So, and right? so uh, Al Young uh, is <laughs> like, the, the drum professor at Shenandoah University, which mm -hmm. is right. another important jazz Winchester. anchor, you yeah. know, for this area. Yep. Because Winchester makes Loudon feel really close by. You know, it's just like because Winchester's so far out. It is out there. Yeah. It's not Loudon County though. No, definitely yeah, it's, not. I'm oh, driving out there for gigs for a minute, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's out. It's out on. It's uh, a nice town. Yeah. I have some friends out there. It's, it's out there it's on uh, Interstate 81. Mm-hmm. And you know, as yeah, soon as you get out. out by Interstate 81, you're dodging trucks. You're you're kind of in bluegrass. <laughs> you're you're yeah. you're in blue, bluegrass. Country. That's a good point. Like if you yeah. look at all those cities, like all along all along 81, full of banjos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just throwing out the trucks. Like, <laughs> somebody was asking me to have, how to play to pass me, boy. Somebody was asking me about directions to a Southern Virginia gig we were doing, and I was just like, "Well, just drive on, <laughs> drive on Route 15 South until you, there's nothing but Jesus and banjos, on the <laughs> and then drive another hour, and then you'll you'll be there. <laughs> just look for the signs; you'll see. <laughs> Hope you're saved. Yeah. yeah. No, no, sorry. <laughs> Going back to the house kids, the Epicures was not brilliant, was it? I don't even. Oh, no. They had one. They had a rock kit. They had buttons. like a Tama, like a Pro Jam, or I don't know what it's called, but it was, a, like a, it was like one of those. In the early 2000s, when the emo got really big, all the bass drums started getting really, 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 really long. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, and then and I so, love that thing. Which, that's a twenty. But this was like an eighteen by twenty-two or twenty by twenty-two or something. This was not a jazz drum in any way. That's all right. You guys want to play tenderly? Do it in three. Okay. Let me get the. Let me have the first half of the. Uh, let me have the first eight bars by myself. Okay. And if I mess it up, you just delete that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Do it again. When I mess it up, delete it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
pipes? Yeah. Perfectly. <laughs> Just according to plan. <laughs> Perfectly according to plan. <laughs> yeah, boys. Perfectly. Timed. Just according to plan. Perfectly according to plan. That's hella sick. <laughs> are, you, like... are you in four? <laughs> <laughs> I look down at my hands. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. But that's the cool thing about like playing music like this, right? Because we never know what's gonna happen. Even if we plan something, it's like, nope. But then we're on an adventure, and so yeah. if anyone wants yeah. to like join us for that adventure, it has to show up to the live music, yo. That's in exactly. the right mindset, right? Yeah. yeah. For an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, if you Fine. listen intensely enough to the greatest recordings of all time, you will hear, <laughs> you will hear missed cues and false starts, and you will hear like some guy thought we were going to the bridge and we weren't. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like. And, and that's and on it, some of the greatest shit. And the, some ever. of the greatest stuff ever. <laughs> yeah. and, yep. and it's just like, it's all about landing on your feet, you know? Yeah. Like Callista Fluffheart. You know? Right. <laughs> like, right. It's just like, it's just like, yeah, I was trying to jump from the couch to the refrigerator and I missed, but I made it look classy. <laughs> <laughs> look at me now, I'm fantastic. Uh, that's yeah. right. You this know that Les McCann album with uh, Cold Duck Time? Oh yeah, but yeah. The bass player starts in straight, and the band starts in swing. Yeah. Like four bars later. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah, it they, it all works. Yeah. Yeah, and I always wondered about. Um, oh yeah. Well, the Miles version or yeah, the, the full yeah. start on there, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it's just it's part of. Man, it's just part of jazz now. Yeah, yeah. It's like that false start on the melody. Mm -hmm. And it just sounds like, I don't know what my life would be without that false yeah. start like like on the melody. <laughs> uh, free, freedom Jazz Dance, right? Or yeah. is it Gingerbread yeah. Boy? No, for, uh, but, uh, freedom Jazz Dance. That's Freedom Jazz Yeah, Freedom Jazz, jazz, jazz Boy, yeah. yeah. Damn, does that tune get called out here? Like, holy no. shit. I haven't played that yeah. in hell days. That's, so. that's a good tune. No, 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 no. We don't do that one very much. <laughs> <laughs> Original version's like a like a soul jazz thing. Oh, who's it? Eddie, Eddie uh, Harris. Yes. Damn, I'm like running through the beer. I bought so, beer, but I was like, no, nah, I'm drinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Thank you, Blake. My buddy brewed this. Huh? <laughs> Where did we get it from? Uh, we gotta go to the plane. It's in Reston, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should get a like a sponsorship going. Yeah. Get the oh, show going. Shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well hey, if, if you've already got an experience with bike sponsorships. So this is <laughs> No, no, no. Serious, like this is something that we're So yeah, okay, so one of the things we were talking about. I mean, all serious all serious is that. We were talking about like guys vibing each other on right. sessions and everything. Remember, those were professional musicians making their living. Right. Yeah. Like at that thing, it was the stakes were higher. That's true. Right, the stakes were higher. That's true. Than, than they are for us now. Oh and yeah, so that is stress, very true. There was more serious. You know, there's less room for bullshit. Yeah. Uh, less room for kids. As I, you know, jazz jazz in America has changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally has. You know, and like a lot of guys would say, oh well, you know, hey, it's over. You know, jazz is not popular music anymore. It's not. A, no, 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 no. It's totally part of our culture. We just changed the where it fits. That's that's we've a changed. good point, man. That's this, really we've good. We've changed where yeah. it fits, and if you look at the guys doing well right now, doing well, doing like playing jazz, they're not just playing jazz. They're playing jazz. They're teaching. Yeah. They've got a video series. They've got sponsors. Yeah. Right. Right. They they've got they've got equipment. They've yeah. got equipment sponsors. Oh, for sure. And it's just like. Just like just like a professional athlete, you know, he's got his salary, and then he's got everything else. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, I think that young musicians are like, they're like, they're getting smart. And they're like, yeah, it's just like, I'm going to, I need to have a social media presence. Oh, and absolutely. I need to have other, yeah. I need to have multiple sources of income. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, you know, like they get grants, they yeah. get grants to, sure. to, to do what they do. And you got it. You can't just say, oh, well, uh, you know, I make, you know, you know, I make, uh, you know, $2,000 a week, you know, playing gigs. It's not, 
It's probably not going to happen unless yeah. you're in a wedding. You're not not doing jazz games, right? No, no. Yeah, yeah, you know you could go do it. You know you could do an event band. Yeah. You know if if you're if you're focused on that, you you can go do that. Mm -hmm. You can go do that, and you, you'll you'll do well. You won't necessarily be playing a lot of jazz. You'll be playing like a handful, you know, yeah. a handful of you know, a handful of measures of jazz. You know, it's just like, oh, he lets me play on the bridge of Ipanema. Close <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, if you've got experience like getting sponsors, you know, for yeah. for for cycling, then you know, you kind of know, you know, you kind of know some of the ins and outs and like what they're, you know, what the what a manufacturer's motivation would be, you know, what a business's motivation would be, what they're looking for out of a sponsor, like what the kind of exposure, you know, and I'm sure with any sponsorships you've done, you, you had an obligation to do some amount of social media, right? Yeah. But I look at, you know, I look at some musicians online and like they're always tagging their sponsors yeah. and yeah. stuff and it is what it is. I mean, it is, it is the, the modern way to mm -hmm. play jazz in this country. Yeah. Um, There's yeah. some young guys who still do it pretty well. Like Elijah is like dubbed the East Coast assassin right now. Oh just yeah. Like, yeah. Every week, like he's like touring or he's just doing gigs. He's just doing gigs, playing a bunch of different people in in New York, and then he's back down here doing stuff. And then he's got that go go band thing going. Yeah, that's great. Like, that's fun. but I guess you just have to be versatile as shit right now, right? Sure. Like, yeah, if you yeah, if you want to do certain things. And but I mean, he, I don't know many guys doing that, right? Yeah. It's, so there's, yeah. you know, he's doing well. Then there's a bunch of younger guys out here who's happy doing the private corporate gigs and wineries, and that's cool too. And mm -hmm. oh. well, I mean, so wineries, so wineries. I mean, <laughs> wineries famously, <laughs> famously do not pay very much. Really? They do not. Wait, private what? event at a, vi a winery does but like regular business hours winery gigs sort of famously don't pay very much um, Wait, what? yeah unless i mean unless you've done have you done some good ones i mean in california <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where the wait, wineries wait, are? You mean they have wine in <laughs> California? <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, hold on. Let's, 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 <laughs> all right, we, all right, we, we have to, we have to discuss. Right, right. Now we, 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 have, we, we have to tread terms. very carefully here, or else we're going to lose our sponsorship. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, listen, listen. So, uh, okay, so maybe you haven't wandered around out west very much, but Virginia has tax incentives for wineries. Oh my God! You don't know. Loudoun <laughs> County is like a destination for wineries, it's true. for vineyards and wineries. Ha! Huh. You know we're talking it about we're talking about what goes on in this area. Yeah. Culturally, Loudoun County um, and West has a ton of wineries, a ton of them, yeah. and none of them pay very well. Um, I think their margins are pretty small, uh, or pretty slim. Uh, I have never played a winery gig in. In California, I would imagine since that wine is banging, <laughs> they probably make more money than they do out here. And since you know, like here, it seems to be most of, mostly like based in tax incentives and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's a big deal. It's a big deal on the week on nice weekends in the season. Mm -hmm. They were oh. running like shuttle buses, like out to do winery tours oh, man. here, like go from one to well, the next. Well, and breweries too. I mean, my my wife goes to stuff sometimes, and she's like, she can't even get in at these breweries. That can't park at some of these places. There, there should be more gigs at these places for all of us. But I don't know what they. I mean, they tend to get acoustic singer songwriter yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, they tend to get yeah. like like pop duo. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, um, but yeah, so the thing is. And it all and it kind of comes back to the the live music experiences or the event experience of like going out and actually doing something and ex being there. People want it. Mm -hmm. They want to do that. Like all my friends, my adult friends with kids, they all want to go out on the weekend and you know have a drink or two and sit outside and enjoy the weather. And there are places that do it, and there should be better gigs for 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 doing that. But it just seems like uh, it's more. Singer songwriter stuff. Somebody playing 
Thing, right. right, and I think it's, it's probably it's, a lot cheaper too, right? Yeah. Like to hire one one person. Is, yeah. yeah, I mean that, and that's the that's the economics. Of, but I think probably I don't know. Like but I think they're about not, they're not upscale gigs and they're not upscale scenes. No, no, which no. I would imagine if you're in you know the Napa Valley, yeah. like some of that stuff's <laughs> got to be like some of it. Yeah, some of it's got to be kind of like here. It's very. But does it? It does. It it kind of works against itself in a way because now you got. No offense to anybody. Some <laughs> old guy playing, you know, some old shit, and <laughs> and it's just like born, if you're born to be wild. <laughs> right, well, yeah, if you're lucky, I mean that's pretty edgy. <laughs> I mean, for Christ's sakes, you got uh, you know, cats in the cradle and all this stuff. But yeah. It's like the the experience is not the same as having like a, you know, it's not a live music experience really. It, not to knock those those guys and I know that they but but if you're a, a patron and you're experiencing that it's not a special thing it's like it's kind of like this is background noise but whereas if it was a jazz band mm -hmm. where there was some dynamic give and take or even like a you know an, an Americana band that has some of that because I play in a band that does that too and it can be it can be special to have that and people I think want that more but I don't know that there's always the the market for it in terms of the viability of it. it, it's like you have to spend more to get three guys or two guys there yeah. than to get the one guy with his PA and on the backing <laughs> truck sometimes. Oh God! Oh dude! That is atrocious. Yeah. That I, is, I, I, just a lot of that. that There's is, a lot of that. I mean, so my wife. That is atrocious. My wife and I have gone. Out, you know, it's just like, hey, it's a gorgeous day. Mm -hmm. You know. Let me, you know, let me play hooky from work and let's go, you know, yeah. let's go to a winery and, yeah. like, you know, bring some snacks and, like, you know, drink a bottle of wine in the, in the sunshine. And uh, it's, it's, it's a little, it's funny. It's, it's kind of weird. And, it, it, you know, jazz would make it, jazz would make it more special. It would. Uh, but I don't think any of the wineries have caught on to that yet. No, no. Maybe we'll convince. How many people... <laughs> How many places and venues like book people actually being songwriters and doing originals? Oh right. Yeah, no. This is no. This no. is no. It's a cover gig. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. One and, but wouldn't it be nice? I mean, wouldn't don't you think people would have? I know I would, and I'm not the target audience necessarily. But sometimes when there's singing or when there's vocals, I'm actually distracted more. Yeah. You know, where when there's like, I'd right. rather just have it on let it be background music but it could still be special like i'm i'm content to be special background music you know what i mean like i don't you know i don't need to be applauded for or recognized you know i'm happy to just play and try to make it an enjoyable experience but sometimes with vocals if you're there as a patron it's like well i'm trying to talk to my friends well, vocals for for better and for worse are more engaging yeah to, right to, to, but to the maybe that's the what i'm saying is yeah. maybe that's not what Right. What would make the experience? It might make the experience a little bit more special to have it not be. And it's funny because, like, we're all musicians, but I guarantee you that each one of us has gone out at one time or another and been distracted by the live music. Oh, sure. When you yeah. when you just really just wanted to go there and chat. And yeah, that's the like, best shit, though. When I'm like, damn. Well, Holy, did you did it, you just hear that? Yeah. It goes that way. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. It's rarely that that's actually what's distracting. Yeah, but it's, it's just like yeah. when when they when the when the music when they don't advertise that it's live music and then the music is trying to dominate your attention. That's yeah. I tough. find that to be awkward. Yeah. I find that to be always kind of like you want to know what you're getting into. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think like in the in the sort of hyper mediated world, that the experience of being together with friends or, or loved ones or whatever and going out and enjoying that experience is is actually a kind of sacred almost it's actually a yeah. special thing and so sometimes when it's like we went yesterday my wife and i went to uh quattro goombas which is a brewery out there yeah they have have you had their pizza no i heard it's good it's like the best pizza i've ever had really that's yeah, really good <laughs> it's well, that's really good yeah. but uh it's really good it's a sicilian style with um the, they they chop the pepperoni up and they put parmesan on. It's really good. <laughs> and uh, but I mean it was a quiet. It was a went. What is it? Thursday. Thursday afternoon. We're on spring break. That's why I can say this. But you know, it it was great. It it would not have. They they had country music blaring through the 
through the PA. Yeah. And so half of our conversation was about, you know, what are these guys singing about? What? <laughs> I'm going, I'm sorry, I'm going, the truck again? Yeah. I'm like, really? What's with the tr-? And they all like to tell you how much their country. They got to re- reinforce it. I'm going to just start doing that all the time. I'm yeah. jazz. Fuck <laughs> you, <know? Yeah. laughs> you, man, I'm jazz. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, but the point being, like, it would be, it, it, you can have that special experience of being out with your, with the people you care about and not have it be, the music can be there and be quality and not be the focus. Whereas I think like a bad cover of Fleetwood Mac or, oh, the Beatles, wow, you really dug deep for this one. It, it's almost more of a, of, an, of a distraction to me. So I would rather it be the other way, but uh, that's just my take, I don't know. What's your experience with uh, library gigs? And, and retirement home gigs. Oh, uh, yeah. Talking about distractions. Yeah. I only libraries do. in Loudoun County and they do. They, they, in this they area, they, they've been doing. They they have a decent duos. budget. They have a decent budget for yeah, music. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, John Coker has been has thrown me a number of those uh, library gigs. Um, I've done half a dozen, maybe closer to a dozen of them uh, by now, and um, they're good. They're good. They're they're. I find attendance is a little weird because I think the marketing is a little weird. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's pretty random whether you can whether you get people. I have played some of those library gigs. They're lovely. They treat you well, but it's just like I don't know. I don't know how many people we're reaching, yeah. um, and that's you know that's a you know it's a critical thing. <laughs> and then so so retirement communities. Um, I've had some very good experience with mm-hmm. that. Um, they often, I mean, they have some fancy retirement communities out here. Um, <laughs> I did a dance. I did a dance at one. Ashby Ponds in uh, in in Ashburn has a. I mean, it's a concert hall. They have a concert yeah, hall. That's cool. It's it's amazing. Um, I did a couple of shows at that one, um, and those are generally very well attended. Like they do a good job, and I think you know, there's not a lot of those places there isn't. You know, a ton going on, and so the like there's somewhat you know, captive audience in a way. Yeah, yeah, uh, and so so those those have been fun. Yeah, those have been fun. What do you think? Yeah, same same experience. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of wine, I know what I was thinking. Uh, speaking of wineries, um, Tarara Winery, Tarara, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mintons, Mintons. Is that right next door? Please, sir. Please, no. sir, can I have some more? Mintonous. <laughs> Tarara. Yeah. Um, the, so, yeah, so at, uh, so Scott Clark, um, yeah, young singer, vocalist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's been doing a lot of solo gigs with tracks, and he's a trained opera, trained opera singer, and uh, is really intru- into the tradition um, the crooner tradition, I should say. Yeah, man, that's all I said. And he's, so he researches this stuff and like he, he does a nice job, but he's realized he showed up to one of the loud and jazz society jam sessions, played with the band. He was just like, I don't know what it's like to play with, you know, cause he's done a bunch of stuff like for classical music, but you know, like doing, doing this crooner stuff, he's only ever really done it with tracks and like. So he sat in with a very good band, and uh, you know, for that it was probably Al Young and Dave mm-hmm. Lyons mm-hmm. and Eric yeah. Kaiser. Yeah. Um, and you know, he did some things, and he's just like, he's just like, wow, he's just like, like I went to the wrong section, like you know, after the solo, and you guys just came with me, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's what real humans do. <laughs> 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 and uh, and so he's, you know, he's really interested in doing. He's really interested in doing like uh, you know live live bands now, and Sick. so he got that Ion gig. And um, I have a ten piece big band um, that I started up Big Night, yeah. and uh, we've done uh, we've done Mr. Henry's, we've done the Old Ox Brewery a number of times, um, and we've done a few private events, and uh, it's it's a very new band, and uh, I told him, hey, go get us a gig. You know, go get go get a gig, and the the big band will back you. And um, he got Tarara Winery, which has which has had a long running concert series of big acts. They put on oh, like yeah. big, big like a big summer concert series, but never jazz. 
And so he oh, wow. got, he somehow got the That's first cool. jazz That's show cool. uh, Labor Day weekend. We're Where is that. this winery? It's um, north of Leesburg, uh, along the Potomac River. I think I went, I've been to a couple it's weddings. One of the original there. wineries yeah. around here. Yeah, it's a cool place. Terrara. Is that the one? It's not the one with the, like the, um, the barn and the. I've actually never been yeah. there. Yeah, I think I went to a wedding there. It was great. It's a nice yeah. place. But it's a, uh, it's very. Oh, I did go there. I, uh, I remember. I don't. I don't. I don't. It was twenty years ago. Um, and it's, but it's very well established. Uh, that concert series is very well established. Uh, that's gonna be a big. That's gonna be a big event. It's gonna be a big event. We're really. Sick really happy to have that i think that's the kind of thing that when people have that experience just like he just like him i mean if he had that experience of being with a band and wow oh my god you guys came with me yeah there that's the thing about live music it's like you make a request and maybe we'll play it it's not some <laughs> dj you know what i mean it's it's or or maybe we'll try it and it's going to be a mess but you're going to have fun because we tried your you know you call yeah. like my wife who would call some 90s hip hop song yeah and I'd be like all right yeah we'll try it you know yeah. I think I know it you know and we'll, it, it, you just that experience that interaction that give and take that's what jazz is but that's what live music is and that's why it makes those things so much more special I think. Yeah. You want to give us, you want to give us some uh, provocative drum something up front?
of the stick going. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. That's good. Yeah, that's the shit, man. So my son Ben. So my my son Ben. Uh, we gotta get um, him in here at some yeah, point. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my son Ben was always a, was always a always had musical talent and didn't really pursue it until like I don't know, it's like maybe his junior year of high school, and he's just like, Dad, you could like. Teach me how to be good at the jazz, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, this is like you guys know me. You know that I've been trying to like yeah, seep yeah. that stuff into <laughs> his mind, you know, yeah. his entire life. And here he is, you know, Finally sixteen years old. Yeah. Like, hey, you can teach me this stuff, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, can you help me with the audition etude? I think I could get into this regional band. I'm like, yeah, you, you're probably good. Um, and uh, so anyway, so he he. Uh, he got into music, and that really has changed my own relationship with the Northern Virginia uh, music scene. That's it's just, cool. He is he just sort of pushed me from what was my comfort zone, which was uh, doing a couple of big band things here and there, had my circle of friends, and um, I would not have met Eugenio if it wasn't for Ben, because Ben dragged me to Epicure, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, the cool. place, with the, I'm like the place with the shitty food and the <laughs> music. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I looked at the reviews. I looked at the reviews. I haven't even been there. And, and I said, I said, you know, I said, Ben, I was like, I'm not the most connected guy in the in the DC area, but I said, I could have better musicians in our living room, like tomorrow, than showing up at some random jam session. He's like, no, no, I want the real jam session experience. I'm like, oh, well, okay. And so we started going places and that's probably where I met you. I think I met you at yeah, a Trumbo's jam. Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, yeah. I had, I did the Loudon Jazz. I got involved with Loudon Jazz Society for you know for him. You know, it's just like it's just like hey, let's go meet some more people. You know, you you're gonna need to know people, and if you want to do this, and so he ended up going to school for music, but he took on his own. So I grew up with WBGO, listen to the radio. He grew up with the goddamn internet, right? And so that's where he learned everything, and he would just sort of like go down the rabbit hole. Of like you know oh that you know I like this this guy what other things did he do and like so he would read and read and read and read and then listen endlessly and he would find all sorts of stuff I never knew about and uh, he was constantly throwing things from social media at me and one of them is uh, these jam session at I hope I'm getting his name right Emmett Cohen yeah um, he's a piano player and he has a, like in his apartment in Manhattan. He gets like famous guys. Oh wow! And they just—I think it might have been a pandemic thing. I think it might have been a pandemic thing that now is like internationally famous. He just runs these sessions in a room like this, except it's just gradually become. He just—he just did this thing where like nobody was working. He's just like, "Come work in my living room." Yeah. He's like, yeah, "I solicit yeah. donations. We actually do pretty well." And you know, he's a fantastic musician. Um, and. Uh, yeah, Ben turned me, ben is he turned a, me on to this, uh, 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 along with another, like, a million things that I never knew about, and it's pretty cool. Nature um, was, there, was there someone who ran a weekly jam session at a barn as well, kind of far out, oh, uh, I used to go to Minton's? Yes, um, man, who was that used to go out there and play? The, lo uh, the guy uh, who had the jam session out in the barn, in his barn. Oh, that was super cool. That was yeah. a great, that's a great... Does he still do that? Pandemic story? No, he's I, I he's no, he, he hasn't at least he hasn't invited me. <laughs> but so yeah, so great innovation. And you oh I so wish you would have gone out to one of these mm. sessions. So a guy, um, you know, sort of like a, a you know, one of these uh, eternal, you know, eternal students, you know, of jazz, um, guy played you know, played a bunch of other styles, but you know, he's always working on his jazz. Stuff you know, everything shut down, um, and he was just looking for places to play, and so he is out in not Luckett's, north of Purcellville, Purcell. out in Loudoun County, huh. and I tell you, you drive out there at night, <laughs> and you're just like, where the hell am I? There's yeah. nobody out here but stars and cows. I played a bunch of gigs with like Caleb out there. Yeah. And it's <laughs> so this guy had an actual barn. Beautiful, beautiful barn. Um, and uh, 
like in the summertime, he would, and this was pretty raging pandemic times. Uh-huh. He opened the the barn door on one side, opened the barn door on the other side, and it was like you were outside. You were just sort of sheltered from, you know, like most of the wind and stuff like that. And so it was pretty open air, and we just, you know, we were there, it all stood like 10 feet apart in his barn. That's you know, cool. it's a big place, and uh, we had jam sessions, and he just had, it was kind of like this, he had lights, you know, you know yeah. Christmas lights strung up, and then when it got cold, he wanted to keep doing it, so he moved us all upstairs in his barn, <laughs> and he just like, had like these big ventilation fans, and uh, That's awesome. none of us, none of us got COVID from it. Uh, <laughs> there we go. And, uh, and we, had, we had pretty cool, we had pretty cool jam sessions.
Well, that's hell oh, sick. A little, little experimental arrangement that I, <laughs> that I do, uh, like all on the low strings. Uh, I don't know if I've got the tone right, but we'll hear the recording. We'll see. hear it there, man. <laughs> Thanks y'all for rolling through. Thanks for having us, Poe. Thank you. You're the man. Such a sweet dude. Dude, yeah. this is sick, man. Appreciate you having us out, dude. That's what are you saying? Straight up. Yeah. Yeah, Talking about jazz like old men. <laughs> <laughs> My whole life has been like headed to this one moment. You know? <laughs> like I've arrived. <laughs> I've arrived.